Hello everybody, this is Bigwigs, and welcome to a Blood Bowl tutorial. And this, uh, maybe small series, maybe in a one-off video, I'm gonna explain maybe how to go from a very noob player, a very bad player, into maybe a mediocre player. Where I'm at. Very strongly mediocre player is where I'm at. And do that, we're gonna learn a bit about tackle zones today. I'm gonna try and teach you a bit about tackle zones today. So let's just jump right into an example of a game where we can see how... Maybe learning tackle zones might be a good idea. All right, we've jumped into the replay system of Blood Bowl 2, and mostly because I find this relatively useful because I can see past games and maybe point out some examples of certain things occurring. I would like to point out that the player here, Coach Shush, is a new player and has shown that he doesn't really understand tackle zones. That doesn't mean he's a bad player, he just doesn't know enough about the game in order to become a better player. And it really does bug me when people don't know about tackle zones because it makes it... Not easy, but almost like I'm bullying people. So this is a small video pointing out tackle zones, tackle zones, tackle zones. Let's just skip ahead to the point where I want to get to. All right, we're right where I want to be. So let's cover what good tackle zones is. We all know what tackle zones is. I'm pretty sure we all know what tackle zones is. It's the little ring around a player that I'll have to actually demonstrate because I can't show it. Of course, not in a real match, blah, 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 blah. It's this little square around this player. It's not the perfect square. Let's not focus on that. But this little square around player is the ring of which he can tackle people. I see there's only one guy in there. You can only tackle one guy. In fact, let's switch over this way. It's better to probably show off this guy's tackle zones since it's actually his turn to use him. Right there. Now, the way some people figure tackle zones work, or at least some new players, and this is understandable is that the more bodies you have that can tackle this guy, the more people that can tackle this guy, the more dice you get. So, let's uh, do a small simulation here. If this guy here moved up to here, which would be inside, you know, which would be within tackle range of this character, this character, then he would have two dice. He would have two dice to block him and have a much higher chance to knock him down. But... That's not exactly how it works. There's some deeper meanings to the tackle zones. And we're going to actually demonstrate that right now with a small misplay he's going to do in a few seconds. He's going to move these guys over to around here. Move this guy, I think, to like right here. Well, at some point. Just move this guy super far over here. I'm not going to talk about his formation here because it's bad. But right here, he moves this guy here. Now... If we get our hand or any marker pointer here. I mentioned before that if this guy moved up one space, then there would be two dice on this guy. Now, in theory, if, if the more bodies equals more dice rule applies, which it doesn't. It's not a real rule. Doing this, what was it, like this guy to here. Uh, let's look at the proper color. This guy to here. Should be the same thing. In fact, it should be better than the same thing because now both these guys should technically have two dice on them. This is the wrong rule I'm actually explaining here. That's not true. Because in order to get two dice, you need assists when you have both equal strength. Both these characters have three strength. Three strength here, three strength on this guy. So if they just attack each other normally, there'll be a one dice block. To get more than that, you need an assist. Putting characters around title zones will equal an assist Usually with actually a lot of exceptions here. So we'll play a little bit forward to show you He's all right. I got two guys there only one dice block the reason for that is This character This guy he's fucking up that extra assist. He's blocking the assist and One if they're inside another tackle zone if this guy's inside any of my people's tackle zones that he's not trying to tackle they're going to block his assist. That's how tackle zones work. In a nutshell. We're going to show a lot of examples because I know I'm not exactly eloquent. So we'll do this by beating a dead horse. If we have a clusterfuck of people, basically a bunch of people walking around, this is where tackle zones, knowing about tackle zones is really useful. So he's screwed up here. A slight misplay. It's still, it comes out in favor for him, but he doesn't exactly know that. And here we have another small case of tackle zone control. I know this is like some really basic examples, 
But it's the basic examples I think might hit home the hardest. Because this character is now surrounded by two people. Let's do the red one. This guy and this guy. Let's just a little highlight some of his tackle zones here. I'm going to have two dice on him. Because neither of these characters are marked by one of his guys. They're outside of those tackle zones. Uh, they're not going to get any assist blocks or assist defenses. Which is a shame. Because it allows me to punch him. There we go. Now I should mention Dark Elves and High Elves. High Elves I'm playing. Both have the same strength. So getting two dice on him while he's not entirely able to get two dice on me. Is a, a pretty big advantage to have. Alright, let's pause it here. Because there's a, a small situation I would like to highlight. Which is the difference between... It's not a big deal. Because if you just sort of... You know, if you do what a lot of new players do, which I think, which is they sort of click on the player, they, they'll start clicking on guys to see who has the two dice block. You know, rather than, you know, looking at the board and knowing where the two dice blocks are, they just sort of guess. Which is a shame, but, you know, this is one of those situations where guessing would get you by this situation just fine, but I think it's good to break down what is happening. So he has this formation here where he has, it looks like the ball is pretty heavily defended. It's not super heavily defended, actually, but that's... That's something else entirely. This huge line of people here isn't entirely useful. So let me just explain what's going to happen right now. This character here, look at my handy dandy marker, will have a two dice block on this guy. Very, very simple. The reason for that is this guy is assisting him. There's no one around him to stop him from assisting. Simple as that. So he's going to assist. Now, what, who could assist him is this guy. This guy could assist. In theory, this guy could assist. But that won't do anything. But he's not going to assist. He's not going to assist. He's not going to help even out the balances. Because four of his characters, these guys and these guys, are being marked by my one guy. This is what I mean when having a huge clusterfuck of things, of players, just sort of interwoven between each other can make weird results happen with the dice if you don't understand the tackle zones. So my one player has now not really cancelled out the usefulness of these players, but he's cancelled out their ability to defend others. Which is very good. The more important thing I want to mention is that if I were to tackle with this character, you know, tackle this guy with this guy, do that, I would only have a one block die. Because even though these characters are all marked and they can no longer assist in blocks, they can still cancel out other assists. It's a lot of a lot of words that are confusing. So because you know this is this guy's tackle zones. You know, it's a lot of dudes, it's a lot of dudes. That's his tackle zone for this character encapsulates these two people right here which means they cannot assist in a block which would lead just mano a mano boom boom block block which isn't ideal because we can do it other ways now the reason this die here is two dice is because although these characters like i mentioned before cannot assist and they can only help out by blocking other oh. assists it's weird. They can block other assists, but they can't assist themselves. That's what it is. Blah. Which means this character, who has no one blocking him, can help out. And thus give it two dice. So knowing who to tackle with and who to move around in order to make the situation happen is important. So if you have characters like really lined up and close to each other, using someone who's inside tackle zones, this guy... As long as he has help for someone outside of tackle zones, this guy, they'll have more maneuverability. Because something else I can do, which I might do in this video immediately after I say this, but once this guy's out of the picture, you know, this guy's free to move around. He's free to say, I don't know, take one step over and help this guy or this guy. You know, it's free to, it opens up a player's movement very nicely. So let's just continue on.
few dice block. Once again, I would like to point out that when you leave someone completely undefended, like, say, the ball holder, this is tackle zones, I can move... Only need two people in here to get a two dice block on him. Very important to not let your ball holder be by himself. I know that's very obvious, but these rules really do back it up. That if you leave him by himself without any way to assist or to cancel out other assists, then you're going to have a bad time. I would like to point out that he tried to do that, but he rolled badly. But still, it's important to illustrate this with the fact that leaving your ball holder by himself is very, very, very bad. Very, very bad. Now, I would also like to point something out here. Things that tackle zones don't do. Having players, say, an enemy team inside of tackle zones does not prevent them from tackling other people when they're trying to dodge out of the way. So maybe I should illustrate this better. This guy, this is his tackle zones. Hey, you know what? He's got a player right in this tackle zone. And he's purposely moved this player here too. So I, I'm pretty sure this is a small misunderstanding on his part. Now, not that I'm trying to insult him or anything. I just want him to be better. Because, you know, games are more fun. And if you get a little bit better at this game, then hey, maybe he'll want to come play and play more. And then the community gets better. And all sorts of very, very nice things. I don't want to insult him. You know, no, no insults taken or given. But moving a player here does not cancel out this player's ability to punch this guy when he tries to run away. It also doesn't negate his ability to punish this guy as he tries to pick up the ball. It doesn't negate anything except for an assist and a block. So, the only thing it negates is if, in some situation, this player just stays here with the ball. It does not negate this player, or it will neg... Let me, let me compose myself. The only thing moving this player here does is negate me getting a two dice block with this character. That's all it does. I still get a two dice block with this character because this player is pretty much entirely unmarked. He can assist however he wants. Because the player you're tackling also doesn't have, you know, his tackle zone doesn't count for uh, canceling out assists. But uh, it's just a small mistake that he made, which has amazing consequences. Yeah, 33% chance to pass because he's in two players cackle zones. He should have probably dodged out of the way while he was running. But whatever. Alright, let's jump in here and talk about what I'm about to do. So, this player here. This one. Ooh, this one. Just punched this guy. Now, it's very obvious he has a few people around him. We've gone over this a few times. If you have someone who's unmarked, and then you punch someone who, even if they are marked, because they can ignore this assist block thing mechanic. I should really come up with a proper eloquent name for that. It allows him to get two dice. What's important is what happens afterwards, which is just a slight, maybe me bragging play. He doesn't follow through, which means the exact same situation can happen with the dude on the right. Well, first, we're going to move this character over here. We'll talk about this area here in a second. It lets him have two dice as well, which, I mean, it fucks up in the end, but what can you do? Let's focus on not my failings, my bad rolls, but on these gentlemen here. Now, they're not being marked by anybody. They're relatively far away. You know, these are all very good things. The only person that could have potentially come over here is this guy. This guy could still come over. You know, if these two players weren't here, this character could come over. I'm pretty sure he has enough movement allowance to blitz and get, you know, potential one dice block on my catcher. And also, he's a blitzer. So, he actually has a fairly good chance to knock this character over and, you know, take the ball from him. This character right here is preventing that because of his tackle zones. If he wants, if this character wants to blitz to get multiple dice on this guy... It'll have to come all the way to here, and then Blitz go in. 
That's kind of tricky. <laughs> In fact, I'm not even sure that would give him two dice. But he doesn't do that. He's not able to do that. Basically, having even one player here in formation can help block out a side of the field. That's all. And we're going to pause one more time because this is also relevant to tackle zones. But maybe in a different way from blocking and assisting and things of that nature. This, What this man has done is he has... Whoop. This placement here is very poor. Most because the way tackle zones work is that you can line them up with two space gaps and that will completely lock down what a runner can do you know, without blocks and whatnot. So, what he should have done is he should have moved one person here if he could have do it. Because, you know, he did have these players jump up. But, so, should have moved one character here. Kept this guy here. And if he could have managed it, probably one, two... Probably guy right here. Is that one to the half? Maybe even right here. Basically, want the tackle zones to look like this. If this guy is here, then we want... There you go. We want full coverage there. Then we would want full coverage here. These are, of course, not perfect squares. This gap doesn't exist. These, these squares are right next to each other. So that that's not even a real gap. And then you would want, like, one here as well. One guy here. And this gap, once again, it looks like it's bigger as a square. That's just because these lines are in the middle of squares. This puts tackle zones everywhere. And getting through with only three guys isn't impossible. You can do lots with blitzes and stuff because because these guys don't have any interlocking tackle zones. They're a bit weak to, you know, multiple characters coming and hitting them. But because you have to use a blitz at them at all, it usually means that the thrower or the runner or whoever the hell has the ball will have to abandon his cage to get through here. And now I'll leave hey, two unmarked characters here, potentially, to chase after him. It's a very good way to get the ball out of the cage is just a very non-aggressive, this is a strong tackle zone. You're going to have to invest something. You know, invest your momentum to get through it. And maybe not even get through it. But let's uh, continue on. Alright, so we come here at the very... Not really the last stage of the round, but sort of uh, the nail in the coffin for this character for this round. Oh, he fumbles it, but he, you know, he, he picks it back up. We are now in a situation where... None of his characters... Well, we'll just let the, the game run out for a bit. We're going to put him in a situation where none of his characters can come over and stop me from making a touchdown. Not without some extreme, like, dicing and dodge rolls. You know, it's very unlikely that um, my player here, who has the ball, will be able to not reach the touchdown zone. That's mostly due because of uh, relatively good luck and proper use of tackle zones. I managed to injure and KO three people and he's managed to do nothing to my guys because he hasn't had very good dice rolls and he hasn't made himself have very good dice rolls so we're in a position where he is very much outnumbered and doesn't know how to play either so this is sort of what i imagine happens to a lot of new players who play against someone like me who has a better understanding of the game where it just sort of steamrolls out of control after a few injuries pop up now, he could still make a comeback. It's still only the second half, but this mostly exemplifies what we see in the game of how tackle zones can affect and change and do things. There are still a few things we need to learn. Not learn, but maybe point out. The practical uses of this in a game-by-game -game basis, I think, have been shown. Actually, there is just one more thing. By placing a player inside one of these lightly yellowed squares... That indicates tackle zones. Darker colored squares indicate overlapping tackle zones. So if you want a visual cue to know that a player is going to have a guaranteed assist, just put them inside that lightly shaded, you know, light yellow tackle zone area. And they'll definitely assist because there's no other tackle zones there. All right. We're in here at the team that just played. They were my team. That, that whole thing that I just showed you is up on the channel as well. If you want to watch through it and watch me insult some people this is not the same team because they've leveled up a lot since then because i do want to show off a skill that can help people with their tackle zone management which is the skill guard a player with this skill assists an offensive or defensive block even if he's in another player's tackle zone 
This skill may not be used to assist a foul. If all of your players have guard, this whole video is pointless. Because then, no matter what, more players equals more dice. And, as you can imagine, a few players with guard are insanely powerful. They allow you basically just to park a player in the middle of a huge number of other players, basically in front of linemen, and have multiple dice on multiple characters constantly. The weaknesses of guard is that guard doesn't work if the person with guard gets tackled, because obviously he can't assist with his own defense. Which sounds weird when you say it, but it makes sense that guard only helps when you're assisting, not when you're actually tackling. Now, thankfully, I got lucky and got two people with guard. If two people have guard, then they basically have four strength. If you have two people with guard standing next to each other, then they both have plus one strength. As simple as that. So two people with guard is basically, hey, on these characters at least, I don't have two characters with three strength. I actually have two characters with four strength. Because there's no real combination that the enemy can do to separate these two at all, really, except for some very niche circumstances. And that involves, like, pushing other players into them. So, yeah. If you have players with guard, you win. And that's most of what I know about tackles. There's probably a lot more to cover. But once again, I'm not a great player. I'm just a mediocre player. And you can actually see some of my mediocre plays over on Let's Play Blood Bowl 2 Teamworks. On youtube.com slash bigwigs which is the channel you're watching unless someone's stolen this in which case i'm flattered really i am i want to thank you guys for watching have a nice day and goodbye